Hey everybody, Jodie here, Decorous Vintage Designs and welcome back to my furniture painting channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to achieve this very grungy, this very glam and this very green furniture look. So stay tuned for that. I was very kindly gifted this chest of drawers today and apparently they come from an old lady's home, a really nice home, but they've been sat for quite a while so they're pretty dirty. So the first thing that I did was give them a really good clean with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. This stuff is amazing for getting rid of any grease, any grime. So I mixed some of my White Lightning with water, I sprayed that on, gave it a really good clean and then I gave it a really good douse in water just to make sure that all of that old dirt and grime is off the furniture. So this piece had three holes on top of it, which I'm assuming they probably drilled into it at some point or something, but I didn't want those holes showing up under my paintwork. So I went in there and I filled them with Dixie Bell mud, which can be used as a wood filler. So all I did was pop some of the mud onto my spatula, filled in the holes, scraped it on, and then once it dried, I just sanded off any excess. Then my piece was ready to be primed. And because this piece was kind of shiny, a little bit slippery, um, I didn't want to go straight in there with my chalk paint. I wanted to make sure that it was well primed so that my paint work would definitely adhere. So I used Slick Stick for this, which is an adhesive primer. I just grabbed a chip brush and I put on two layers. So you put on your first coat and you leave it to dry a couple of hours and then you go in with your second coat and leave it to dry overnight. Um, and that way you can be totally confident that your slick stick is completely um, adhered to the drawers. And now it's time for the fun part and it's time to start painting this piece. So believe it or not, I know this piece is really, really green, but it's actually a tiny bit layered as well. You'll see at the end when I show you a few close-ups, some of the extra details and texture that's kind of peeking through underneath. And if you've made it this far, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want more painting videos. Okay, so the first color that I used is Dixie Belle's Pumpkin Spice, which is this really warm orange color. This was a limited edition color, so if you're not able to get a hold of this, then terracotta in the chalk mineral paint range is the closest color to that. I have left the pulls on for this. Um, I want the pulls to look part of the piece. It's totally personal choice, up to you whether or not you want to do that, that's just me. And then again with a chip brush, because I'm all about the chip brushes, um, I put on a nice thick layer of the pumpkin spice. Doesn't really matter about brush strokes at this point, doesn't really matter whether or not you put it on thinly, thick, different textures in different areas. Um, we're just building up some layers here, so it's just good to get a nice coat on there. Next up, I use a little bit of kudzu, which is this very soft leafy green color. And I also use the Le Petit brush. So the reason why I'm using the Le Petit brush, and you can't, you can't say that word without doing the dodgy French accent, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, is because it's got a really nice round edge with a little bit of a point to it. So it can be really good for stippling and getting that kind of um, round texture and brush strokes that I sometimes like. So yeah, I went in there and I stippled the kudzu over the top of the pumpkin spice. Making sure that I don't cover the whole of the pumpkin spice up, I'm leaving some of that orange colour poking through underneath because this is going to be a layered look and I want it to look rustic and aged and by leaving some of that colour it's going to help me achieve that authentic aged look. I'm not using any water for this either, I am just going straight in there with the, um, with the kudzu I'm building up more layers and texture. Okay, and the next color on my list is dried sage. And I actually just used a chip brush for this and I dry brushed some of the dried sage around the um, edges of the piece. Again, just building up layers and texture. Because sometimes the way that I paint is very much intuitive and it's adding and taking away and just kind of going with, with the flow and what feels good, sometimes some of the colors that I use aren't always totally necessary. And I would say in this case, you could probably skip the dried sage part and move on to the next. 
because overall I don't think this stage of the painting really added a great deal to the overall finished look, but I like to show you the whole process, so I'm going to show you that anyway. My next colour is Palmetto and I focused the Palmetto at the bottom of the piece using the Le Petit brush again and the reason again I'm using this brush is because I want that kind of smoky, rounded, blendy texture that it can give me. I am misting a little bit of water at this point because I want the paint to move nicely, I don't want it to be crazy thick and crazy textured because I'm going to be blending this into some of the colours. As I am painting the palmetto on, I am using swirly movements and this again is just to get that kind of smoky textured look. I then began blending some tree frog green around the middle, which is this really bright, vibrant colour you can see here. Um, and I started blending that into the palmetto. Again, because this is a rustic look and because it's kind of smoky, you don't have to do like a perfect ombre and it doesn't have to be perfectly blended. You can have a little bit of a palmetto further up and a little bit of a tree frog green going further down. The idea is, is that we want this kind of aged look that maybe it's got a little bit dirtier and grimier at the bottom <laughs> um, because it's more exposed to the floor and the surroundings of whatever environment it's in. Um, and maybe, you know, some of the colors have started to fade. And, you know, when you think of age things, you don't just get like this perfectly sleek one color finish. You start to see different bits of color peek through, different textures. You get color that's darkened around the edges and a little bit brighter in some areas where the sun's been. So this is kind of all the crazy thoughts that I'm having as I paint this. So don't overthink it, just have a play and enjoy the colors that you're using. So at the top, then with the tree frog green, I blended in some daisy, which is a bright, vibrant yellow. A couple of little tips here. If you feel like the paint is dragging too much, then you need to just spritz a little bit of water, not too much, otherwise it'll slosh around. Just build up the water gradually or wet your paintbrush a little bit just to get the paint moving. But if you feel like the, um, the paints are just kind of going really muddy, and um, not really blending too well, then maybe you just need to use a little less paint and just remember to build up the paint colors gradually. So once that all dried, I used Big Mama's Butter to seal this piece. Big Mama's Butter can be used to freshen up wood, um, bring out the colouring wood, you know, freshen up drawers and things like that, but it's also great for sealing chalk mineral paint. Um, I especially like it because I think it's really hardy, it, you know, it dries really solid and also I feel like it brings out the contrast of the colours, so it almost deepens the colours. So I firstly applied that, then I applied a little bit of the Best Dang Wax in black over the top of it in some areas. The reason why I like to put a clear wax on first before going in there with my darker decorative waxes is because it can just be, make it a little bit easier to wipe the decorative waxes off if you feel like you've just gone in there a little bit too heavy. It also means that I can blend them in and soften out the edges the way I might do a paint as well. But that being said, the Best Dang Wax is water-based, so you can also go in there with a damp rag and wipe it off also if you feel like you've just gone in there a bit too heavy. So with a chip brush I focus the Best Bang Wax in black around a lot of the edges. This is the bit where it's going to make it look grungy, it's going to bring out the colour even more by creating a bit of a vignette um, and I focused it mainly around the edges and you can see here I brought it into some of the yellow, I brought it down on some of the bottom edges but I focused it mostly at the bottom of the drawers and the top of the drawers and again that's just to achieve that aged look. Just want to say if you're enjoying this video then you can check another one out here after this video because this is another grungy look that you might enjoy but before i finish this video i want to show you guys how i did the top of the piece because that's something you ask me a lot firstly i put on a base coat of anchor from the silk mineral paint range and the reason why i'm using silk paint for the top of the piece and not chalk mineral paint is because it has a built-in top coat. So I don't have to worry about sealing this afterwards. I've already got a paint that's going to dry as tough as nails. 
I applied it with a chip brush just because I wanted the texture and I didn't want it to be perfectly even with it being a very rustic look. Once that had dried, I then really saturated the top of the piece with my water mister and I added some whitewash glaze. And then with a rag, I just patted it down because then that creates this, again, this faded aged look. It's making it look like some of the black pigment has been lost, that maybe it's been stained a little bit, you know, just to get that authentic antique look that I like. And then lastly, I, with a fan brush, I went in there with some gold digger. And this is the first time I've ever tried foam marble. I've seen people like Rocky Crystal Interiors do it, Girl in Blue Designs. They're two of my favorite furniture artists and I would definitely recommend checking them out as well. Um, so I thought I would give it a go because I've been kind of scared of it, if I'm being honest. Uh, all I did was paint some squiggly lines and then I patted it down with my rag just to soften it up a little bit. Um, what I would recommend is if you're unsure, then just look at a photo of some marble and look at the way the lines are and the veins and maybe just try to replicate that a little bit. Um, I didn't want it to look really strong anyway. I wanted it to look really faded and grungy. So I just patted it down to make it look like maybe the gold had started to wear away a little bit. Okay, I'm about to show you the finished look. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this a kind of look for you? Is it a look that you want to try? And as always guys, I really appreciate you watching these videos and supporting my channel. It means the world to me, um, especially if you've got this far. And as always, have a happy time painting. Bye-bye.